Well, here in New Zealand, period products are available free in public schools, but in Scotland, they've gone even further, making them free to anyone who needs them. Starting this week, menstrual products are available in places like pharmacies and community centres as the Period Products Act, Act comes into force. Well, Scottish MP Monica Lennon first introduced the idea back in 2016, and she joins us now. Um, Monica, thank you for joining us. This must be a proud moment for you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, I think it is a proud moment for everyone in Scotland. We've been working very hard on the campaign for period dignity to make free period products more widely available. That campaign has been running for, for six years through the Parliament. But of course, women and girls have been fighting for equality on these matters for a very long time, not just in Scotland, but around the world. So we are pleased that our legislation already in force, already being implemented right across the country, um, is having positive impacts already. And it means that no one should have the indignity of going without the essential period products that they need. Yeah, absolutely. And Monica, many see access, I see this access as a human rights issue because when women and girls can't afford menstrual products, they miss school and they miss work, don't they? And our research confirmed that in Scotland. It was horrifying to hear in my own parliamentary region, just outside of Glasgow, of young girls missing out on school and teachers having to go into their own handbag or purse and, and hand out spare emergency products. That's no way to, to educate young people, to support people in the workplace too. We heard about healthcare workers often working shifts in um, people's homes or in, in community social care centres and they were bleeding through their clothes in the middle of the night and they couldn't rush out to a shop. So we want to, you know, periods are normal. We have to remember that. Mm. And we want to normalise access to period pads, tampons and, of course, reusables, which are kinder for the environment. But in a way that doesn't... In, um, increase the stigma. People already feel quite embarrassed. Women and girls felt that they couldn't talk about it. And of course, we want to be inclusive of, of trans people and non-binary people who may also menstruate. So we've shown it can be done in Scotland. Yeah. It's anti-poverty and it's pro-equality. Yeah, well, what have, you've done pilots there already to you know test and access, um, uh, test access and the delivery. What have you found the impact of this policy has had in those places? So we've been really fortunate in Scotland that we had some early adopters. So even as early as 2017, when I was working on the initial proposals, we had some leaders in the college sector and in local government who said, do you know what, we can just go and do this within existing budgets because they recognise the, the benefits for, for well-being and for keeping people in school, not missing out on important exams and so on. So we've got a lot of data that shows that the for very low cost investment, the, the outcomes are really good. And so far, we've actually seen a lot of um, business leaders in the private sector who are not covered by the legislation, but are doing this voluntarily because they want to show to uh, I suppose prospective employees, they want to attract talent to their industry, they want to show that they are period friendly and it's not just about the products then, it's also about having good policy around menstruation and the menopause for example. Well Monica, thank you so much for sharing uh, the, your experiences and that legislation with us, uh, all the way from Scotland. Thank you.